What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Handmade and Beyond podcast. I'm your host, LL, leader of the HandmadeAndBeyond.com website and community. I'm a self-employed entrepreneur, an Etsy expert, and business coach who's figured out how to make my entire living with my handmade business. Each week, I'll dive into strategies and success tips to help you with your handmade business, with Etsy, and everything in between. Let's dive in. What is going on, Handmade and Beyond Nation? Glad to be back with you guys. Welcome back to the podcast. Hopefully, you guys are doing awesome. Uh, hopefully, you guys' is, summer is going well. Uh, you know, we're almost uh, we're flying through it, uh, flying through this year already. Uh, so pretty soon we're going to be preparing for the holidays, which is crazy, hard to believe, but uh, we should have a lot better holiday, I think, this year than uh, last year for sure. Things are definitely looking up. Uh, things are exciting. There's a lot to be uh, looking forward to. So uh, this episode is an awesome one for you. Hopefully it helps you guys out. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the five ways to increase uh, revenue in your Etsy business. Uh, so this is something, I mean, I could talk about this probably all day, but I want to keep this episode con- concise, uh, and I'm sure I'll be back again with some more uh, tips and strategies uh, to bring to the table uh, about this topic, but these are the five that I think are a little bit easier probably to do um, that you can focus on, probably implement implement pretty quickly. Uh, but it's always good to analyze your business. And as you do have your Etsy business a little bit longer, you're going to start to shift your mindset um, from a maker to more of a business, uh, you know, business mindset, business owner, marketer uh, type mindset. Because a lot of uh, a lot of sellers, when they start, you know, we are strictly creators, makers, designers. That's your mindset. That's what you're good at. That's what you're passionate about, um, you know, which is great. Uh, but being an entrepreneur and a business owner, especially, you have to learn. You have to add in those other layers of your business in order to uh, keep things growing, keep things keep th- things moving forward. Which is the hard part sometimes, and it's not always what we want to do. Um, so I have been fortunate enough, you know, my corporate background, my past life. You know, I have a lot of business experience. You know, I have a lot of marketing experience, and I use that to apply to my business, and then hopefully. Uh, share those strategies and share those things with you guys to help you in your business as well. Um, So a lot of this is a lot of this is based on, you know, marketing, but even more so things that I've tested and implemented in my own uh, businesses over the years. So all right, so number one, let's dive in the five ways to increase revenue in your Etsy business. Uh, Number one is to open your Etsy shop. No, just kidding. (laughs) If you don't have an an Etsy shop, Make sure you get that open because you can't have revenue without an Etsy shop open. So if you guys are still procrastinating, still on the fence uh, with opening your Etsy shop, get it open. All right, let's get serious. All right, so number one is to increase the number of listings you have. And you're probably like, LL, this is, of course, you know, this is a, this is a no-brainer, you know. It makes, it's it's obvious. Well, there's a lot of people that get stuck and don't scale their business appropriately, uh, there is a correlation between the number of listings you have and revenue. It's not a, it's not a complete direct correlation, but there is a uh, a correlation. You know what I mean? So if you have fifty listings uh, and you add fifty more listings, your revenue is not going to increase by two. It's just not the way that it works. Chances are it will increase if you're strategic about what listings you're adding to your shop and you're using uh, the data that Etsy's giving you or maybe a third party tool such as Allura is giving you um, to implement new listings. If you use that to your advantage, you can be smart about it and strategic uh, and increase your revenue. So quality makes sense. Data driven decisions make sense. You're not just throwing stuff out there, uh, just whatever, where it's all over the place, different niches, just a bunch of junk uh, you're throwing out there. So it has to be with what you're makes sense with what you're selling um, and makes sense based on data, what you think is going to sell well based on what stuff is sold before. So, uh, you, you need to make sure that your what you're selling, what your, your shop is scalable. You may have to start small at the beginning. We all do. Most of us do. Um, but if you can't scale your business and add in more items over time, you know, if you open a business with only five items and that's all you're ever going to have, um, that's going to be a really, really tough 
road to haul. So you need to make sure that you are opening something, you're within a niche uh, where you can scale it. So have a plan, set up a goal, set up a strategy where you're consistently increasing your listings um, because that will help you. Uh, it will give you more data, give the alg algorithm more data. You can see what people like, what they don't like. Uh, the 80-20 rule is real. So 80% of your listings won't do well uh, or won't do great. Some may do okay. 20% of your listings will do good. But if you only have five listings, that's not a lot of that's not a lot of input you're going to get. So we need to get more listings in there so we can get more data to make better decisions to grow your business down the road. So have a plan to do that, um, but do it where you know within a strategy where it makes sense within your business in your niche. The next uh, one you're probably going to be like, man, this this guy, is, these are all obvious, but they're not. <laughs> They may be obvious, but they're not often done. You know, a lot of people procrastinate on these or just don't uh, recognize the importance of these things. And a lot of times, uh, the things that you need to do uh, are are simple. They're not uh, they're not hard things. It's just doing them. So number two is raise your prices. So for whatever reason, a lot of makers like to shortchange themselves. They think that they're not worthy. Their products aren't worth as much as they are. Um, and they charge too little for them. I see it all the time. You know, it's just like the, you, you, you're hand making a lot of this stuff or you're spending a lot of time designing it. Uh, you know, it's a lot of hours that you have to consider in that price, you know, within reason. And maybe you're starting out, you know, small and you don't have the equipment or the facilities to make your items as fast. So you have to take that into account. But if you get to the point where you can speed that stuff up and be more efficient, uh, you know, that's where you want to get to and that's going to all impact your your pricing. So maybe you, you just need to make sure you're charging enough at the beginning uh, to pay yourself. You know, you're not working for free. You know, this may be a hobby at first to make some extra money, but you still need to make money doing it. We're not out here uh, trying to work for free. Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense and that won't keep you motivated to continue uh, your business. So make sure you're charging enough um, considering your hours that you're spending uh, with creating your items, uh, if make sure you're doing pricing research. You know, Alora has uh, a lot of pricing uh, tools in their in their tool chest. So, with if you're researching keywords or shops and stuff like that, they'll tell you what the average price is for the top hundred listings selling that item or selling ranking for that keyword. So that'll help you set your prices. You don't want to necessarily go too low, but you don't want to necessarily go too high depending on what you're selling. You know, if you're selling something that's completely amazing, one of a kind thing no one else is having, then you can probably go on the higher side. Uh, so usually right in the middle is a pretty good place to be. A lot of people think cheaper will sell more. It's not the case, especially not with Etsy. People don't want cheap stuff. Uh, they want stuff that's high quality handmade, especially on Etsy. So don't uh, shortchange yourself. Make sure you're, you're charging enough. Analyze your prices. You know, if you have decent sales, uh, especially if you have like a couple of popular ice items and they're selling all the time, try raising your prices on them. The chances are it probably won't impact sales and people will still buy. And then you're going to be, instead of making, you know, whatever your margin is, instead of making, for instance, like maybe a 50% margin, maybe you can get that up to 60% just by increasing your, your items. And then you can put that extra money back in your business to grow. Just something to consider. You should always be analyzing your pricing, um, do some test pricing uh, to figure out, out what your buyers want, what will help motivate your, um, to get you more sales. All right. Number three, I would suggest to stop doing free shipping no matter what. So I hate this because it leaves money on the table. And this is something that, uh, you know, maybe you think I'm wrong on this and that's fine, but I've tested this extensively, extensively, extensively A number, number of times I've offered free shipping no matter what. And it's never helped my sales. If anything, it's hurt my sales and it's hurt my revenue. Now there's a difference between offering shipping and then gouging people for shipping where like eBay does, you know, people on eBay do this all the time. You're buying a $10 item and they charge $20 for shipping. That kind of stuff, that will get people ticked off and not want to buy from you. So just be reasonable with your shipping costs. As long as you're not gouging people, you can charge for shipping. And that's totally fine. Now, another way you may want to offer a free shipping incentive. You know, Etsy encourages you to do the $35 or, or 35 spending $35 over more or more to get free shipping 
if I could spit that out because I can't say that phrase for whatever reason, it's a tongue twister. Um, so it's a free shipping incentive to get them to spend $35 or more and then they'll get free shipping. Whatever works for your margins, you should have some type of free shipping incentive to encourage people to spend more. Uh, it's a marketing tactic that's been around for a long time because it works. Um, you just can't give it away, you know, make them earn it. People will pay for shipping. Uh, people understand with Etsy, it's not Amazon. These are small business owners. Uh, so the majority of people understand that when they're coming to Etsy to shop. So just keep that in mind. I would suggest not doing it. It doesn't mean you can't do it as like a sale or a promotional thing, um, but free shipping no matter what all the time. I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of that. All right, number four, um, add higher priced items to your shop. Uh, so a lot of people, when they have, they sell a particular niche, they sell a particular thing, most of their items are similar or the same type of item. For instance, if you sell mugs, that's all you sell is mugs, your price is gonna be relatively the same. So think of a way that you can add higher priced items. So you're targeting just one demographic there. Think of a way within your niche that you can add a higher priced item to, to track some of those uh, higher level demographic uh, spenders or different audience of people. Uh, plus it'll increase your revenue. So within your niche, you're gonna have to think about it probably, but how can you, you know, if most of your items are selling for 25, how can you get a hundred dollar item in there? How can you get a $75 item in there? Um, how can you get a $200 item in there? So there's different ways that you can do it, um, but think about what you're selling your niche and offer higher priced items in your shop, whether you convert them, you know, offer custom stuff or um, higher quality materials. There's a number of ways that you can do this, but I like having different price ranges within the niche uh, to attract different demographics. So think about that and how you can implement that in your shop. Last but not least um, is add variations to your listings where customers can add basically upgrades. Uh, upgrades in maybe materials, products, uh, different things. There's a lot of things you can do with variations, but so say, say for instance, if you sell a silver necklace uh, and that is what the listing is for, Maybe you want to offer the option to add, uh, you know, for the buyer to change that to a gold necklace. You can change that into variations, uh, and then they would basically be spending more money. Uh, you'll be making more money. You want to arrange it so you're going to make a little bit more in your margin for that. Um, they already like the necklace, but maybe they want the gold option, but it costs more money. That is a way to increase your revenue. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. A lot of different ways you can set up variations. They can get a little tricky. Uh, but just think about it from a business uh, standpoint within your niche. Is there a way that you can maybe offer high, higher quality items or different items within the variations to increase, you know, revenue? Usually it's there's almost anything you can get a higher quality material or a slight upgrade with um, whatever it is that you're selling. You can do that with the variations and uh, that will increase your revenue as well. So all those things, uh, the, the five ways are increase the number of listings you have, raise prices, uh, stop doing free shipping. <laughs> uh, don't hate me for saying that. Uh, add higher price items to your shop and add variations to your listings where customers can upgrade to uh, different items correlating to what you're selling. Those things, maybe you don't wanna do them all, but pick some of those or at least hopefully get you thinking about your business, how to tweak it a little bit to get you guys some more revenue. More revenue is money that you can put back into your business or maybe even put it in your pocket because you got to pay yourself right um, that is the name of the game you might as well make a little bit more money with what you're already doing in your business so i hope that hopefully that helps you do that um, if you guys haven't seen i have a brand new training for you it's how to build a top one percent etsy biz or business or short for biz <laughs> uh, and learn the top seven things the best Etsy shops focus on to be successful. So this is a great new training, video training uh, that I developed for you guys to just get you thinking about your Etsy business and get you in the habits and in the mindset of what the top uh, top sellers, the top Etsy businesses are doing uh, and are focused on and are doing consistently to be successful um, because I want you guys to be successful too in your business. And a lot of that is just knowing that you can do it, um, staying on task, staying on track, learning what the top shops are doing, implementing them, that stuff in your shop, uh, and just not being afraid to try new things and just keep pushing that boulder up the mountain. It will get easier if you just keep pushing, I promise you that. So you can watch the free training at handmadeandbeyond.com 
front slash Etsy success. Uh, hope to see you guys in there. But until next time, I'll be back with another episode for you guys very, very soon. Have an awesome rest of your day and happy selling.